What's going on YouTube? My name is Dr. Tony Doe. I'm a physical therapist and in this video I'm going to be reacting to this recent pec tear, pec injury that went absolutely viral. It's definitely something else. So if you're interested in that, let's hop right in. All right, so to set the scene here, this video is posted from Larry Wheeler. First and foremost, he is a popular powerlifter slash bodybuilder, really known for powerlifting records, I believe. But anyways, he's a spotter in this video. So the one that is doing the actual bench pressing is Ryan Crowler. And from my understanding, Ryan Crowler is 23 years old and he's a competitive bodybuilder, of course. So here, right off the rip, looking at the weight on the incline press, absolutely insane. So we got five plates on each side, that is 495 pounds. <laughs> so no pec, first and foremost, should be able to withstand 495 pounds, especially at the tempo that he's going. So props to him first and foremost, but before we dive any deeper, let's watch this. Okay, so he's got three spotters, that's good. Nice controlled descent. Ah, ah, oh my God. Okay, so this is the angle I saw at first. I actually haven't seen that angle that we just watched. And this angle here, it looks like Larry Wheeler is the only one, or Larry Wheels, sorry, is the only one doing the spotting. Okay, so 495, nice controlled descent so far. And right about there. That is absolutely brutal. So let's discuss the anatomy of what's going on here. So your pec major, which was what was torn in the video, there are really three components to the pec complex as a whole. Starting off on the right of the screen here, that's actually your pec minor. In this case, it doesn't really play too much of a role. The pec minor really works to move the shoulder girdle as a whole and stabilize. But the pec major, this is what was torn. So there are two parts to the pec major the clavicular portion starting up at your clavicle as well as the sternal portion which is the bottom and middle portion of it all those fibers actually come and meet at the humerus here which is your upper arm bone and oddly enough with the pec major it's one of the muscle groups in the body that really only the few that do this they actually twist the fibers actually twist before the insert into the humerus and you can't really see it well here but as you can see, it kind of twists. I pulled up another photo to show it better. So it's not a straight on insertion. Uh, the tendon actually twists, the fibers actually twist before inserting into the humerus. Now the actions of the pec major, this is what it does. It raises the arm up like this, it flexes the humerus, so the upper portion does that. It also extends the humerus from a flexed position, the bottom portion does that. But the main functions are it turns your humerus inward like this, it acts as a, one of the major internal rotators of the body. It does horizontal adduction. So all of those components combined, you can kind of see where the pec tear was occurring because once you're down here in the bench press, the incline press, in this position, that is where it is maximally stretched. So with that anatomy lesson included in there, let's think about this and break this down. So at the top there, that's the most shortened position that the pec is going to be throughout this lift, right? It's fully contracted at the top here or as much as it can be. As he's slowly lowering it down, the pec elongates because it's attached to the humerus. So think about kind of a rubber band here. If I'm going towards this way, the rubber band is going to slowly get more top. That's exactly what's happening here. So right about when his elbows reach 90 degrees, that's kind of where peak tension is on that tendon itself. And in this case, this load is too much for that tendon and him to handle. So right there, rupture. Oh my God, this, this angle is way worse than the other one, let me tell you. So again, starting to the top, he's doing just fine there, really not much of a risk for any sort of muscle or tendon rupture. As he slowly goes down, and keep in mind he's really controlling this eccentric quite well. He gets to the bottom, max tension there, rupture. That is devastating. Now let's discuss why this injury even happened, right? So first and foremost, that load, 495 pounds, like I said in the beginning, no pec should be able to handle, sustain that type of load with that sort of eccentric control. So huge props to him, like I mentioned, to be able to handle that. 
Before 95, I don't know if this is an Eagle lift for him. I don't know if this is for the Gram. I don't know if he does something close to this often. But in this case, it was way too much for that pec tendon to handle and it went. Secondly, this is a contributing factor and I don't know how well his mobility is, but if his mobility is impaired or it's not as great as it should be, that could lead to a lot of extra stress on that pec tendon itself. Because when you're doing a maximal lift, compound lift like this, you're really contracting all the muscles in your body, right? Like everything is working. So if his mobility isn't there, he's not fully utilizing his stabilizers, fully utilizing the other muscles besides for the pec, which then puts extra stress on the pec. And in addition to this, if his shoulder mobility is you know, not the greatest, you can kind of see in the video that his grip is very wide. And when your grip is that wide, that's one, not the best position for your shoulder, but two, the wider it is, the more tension you have on that pec tendon. Now, as an avid lifter and a physical therapist, I'm all about great form, right? Good form should be the first and forefront of your training for longevity and all of that. But when you're doing a max lift like this, from someone who's done many, many max lift attempts, your, your form kind of goes out of control. You can kind of have, you know, the best thought in your mind that you want to do this perfect form. But when you're doing a max lift, everything gets contracted like I mentioned. So good form isn't always going to be the case with maximal lifts. So just for you people watching this video that aren't, you know, avid lifters, Max lifts, good form, isn't always going to be the case. You want to strive for that, but not always going to be the case. And the final contributing factor I can think of is performance enhancing drugs, right? Steroids, PEDs, I don't know how open he is, if at all, about that use, but if he's a competitive bodybuilder that size at 23 years old, I'm very confident he's using something. But the point of this is, is that there is some research out there, and this isn't conclusive or anything, so don't take it as such. There is some research pointing towards steroid use and decreasing the, the elasticity, thus increasing the stiffness of tendons. So in this case, if there's less elasticity as you're going down and stretching that muscle, then you are more prone to tendon ruptures. Again, research is kind of inconclusive about this, but it is heading towards that direction. Now, an injury like this, you're, you're not gonna wanna wait for a surgical procedure, right? There are some injuries where you may wanna wait and see what happens or give some time to heal. A pec tear, definitely not the case. The longer you wait, actually, the more at risk you put yourself for having an unsuccessful surgery. So something like this, you wanna go into surgery right away. Now, given the surgery is successful, which I think in his case it is, his arm is gonna be in a sling for a few months, I believe. I'm not sure exactly the timeline there, but it will be a few months. And then after that, lots and lots and lots of physical therapy. So it's gonna take a while for him to get back to the level and the strength that he's at right now. He'll get there eventually, but it's gonna take some time. Now, the main takeaways from this video is to be smart and calculated with your training. I'm not saying never go heavy and never push yourself, but be calculated with you know, where your boundaries are at that time and slowly build up to try to push past those boundaries. Don't just go for it in an instant like this. I'm not sure if that's a case with him. I doubt that's a case. Maybe it was for the gram, but someone like him, I'm sure is very calculated with his training and I wish him all the best. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up below, leave a comment. And if you want to see more like this, what injuries would you want me to react to and break down? I'm very curious. I enjoy doing this. I love the topics of human body, lifting, putting it all together, injuries, you know, it's up my alley. So let me know that in the comments below. And until next time, peace out guys, thanks for watching.